Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, I wanted to go ahead and show you how to make this exact scene. We will be mainly focusing on the lighting and the environment and setting up a mode very, very quickly. In order to get a nice image within 13 minutes, this is targeted towards beginners and I will be linking down all of the necessary assets down below as always. If this is interesting to you, follow along. As you could see, we are starting with a base model which we have downloaded from the SketchUp 3D warehouse made by Anna M, link down below as well. The first thing you want to go ahead and choose every object, go into edit mode and press in P to separate by material. Now this will separate every, every object into uh, based on its materials and after that you want to go ahead and select every object and press select linked by material. This way it selects every object with the same material so you can join them and just have a more organized file in order to clean up the geometry later on. Now you could go ahead and add some chamfers or uh, bevels using the modifiers and for example immersion by distance to remove any double vertices that are overlapping. And if you get any shading issues you could go ahead, for example, after adding the bevel, you can go ahead to the uh, modifiers and add in a weighted norm modifier while also checking the keep sharp option, as you could see in front of you. Here's the effect. This will clean up the mesh and fix the ugly normals that usually come with the CAD files or any model that's not modeled based on polygonal software for rendering. For the materials, we are using them from Polyhaven, for example, this wood plant, material which we have added to the porch wood, as you could see in front of you. Now, the materials again are extremely simple. This is not the main focus of the tutorial, just a quick rundown of the materials used since the process is very simple and easy to do. As you can see here is the setup for the material. Extremely simple, extremely easy, albedo map, roughness map, normal map, without a displacement even, since we don't need it, but I kept it anyways. The glass is extremely simple as well. The wood is the wood plank material. Make sure that the object coordinates are right. You can go ahead and just play with the UVs, which is the method that I pr prefer to use over the uh, scale in the object, in the, uh, coordinates the glass again simple material transmission set to one roughness set to zero although not physically accurate but works okay enough for our trees we are simply using a popless poplar tree which you can go ahead and download from 3d sky there are some paid models i've used a paid model right cost around seven dollars or you can go ahead and just download a free one Feel free to Google and choose whatever fits you well. In this case, you want to go ahead and select the leaf material and press select to select every object with the leaf. Delete the leaves. We only want the branches and the smaller twigs, not the tertiary twigs since they rack up the render time very, very high. And for the grass, we are using some grass from Megascans Quixel Bridge. For the material, it's extremely simple as well. It has three based shaders. The first one is a principal BSDF with an albedo map, a roughness map, and a normal map. We also added a hue saturation node in order to play with the color and the hue of the grass. Roughness and normal, as I mentioned earlier. Now mix this principal BSDF with a translucent BSDF using the translucency map that comes. Now this in itself looks bad because we lack the opacity. So you want to go ahead and after mixing the principal PSDF and the translucent, mix the mix shader with a transparent material and use the opacity map as the mix factor. And voila, you have a super nice and realistic grass asset.
I will be showing you later on how to make your own grass using Blender or Speedtree, but that comes in the future. We also now want to scatter our grass onto a landscape. So we're just adding a plane. After adding a plane, scan up to 10 times, adding the camera, setting up the resolution 2000 by 1500, and rotating it on the X axis for the camera, and just trying to get a nice composition. Now, in this case, there are no rules. I personally prefer to go ahead for a wider focal length, but in this case, using a 50 millimeters benefited me the most, contrary to my older videos. Make sure to enable the compositional guys in the viewport inside of the camera uh, properties and play with the shift Y to avoid any sort of unwanted distortion. We are using cycles for this one and with GPU compute. You might, you know, try this with EV next. We've got a video that already does a comparison up. And for the material, we're using a simple material from Quixel Bridge. You could use the materials from the Blender Kit add-on. I used it in my initial intro scene, but I did not show it during the recording because for some reason, whenever I just look for a material, it crashes while I'm recording. Without recording, works just fine. When recording, crashes, so I really don't feel like repeating the recording process. Hence, not using the arrow, but you can go ahead and use it as you will. We need our lighting now. Let's add a sky texture. Set the ozone layer to 4 and the altitude to 2000. Not very realistic, but it has a nice blue hue. Play with the sun rotation and let's leave the sun elevation to its default value of 15 degrees. For the strength, play with it until it makes sense. In my case, 0 0.5 was okay since we will add a lot of shadows. Need it. Subdivide your landscape plane and just make it a bit less irregular. We want it quite flat, but we still need some slight details in there in order to cast some nicer shadows with the grass, which looks super nice with the translucency. Now, the displacement is very subtle, but it adds up once we add our grass here. Now, let's create a vertex group and paint where we want our trees to be. Now, you might say, why are you painting behind the camera? Everyone tells you to just, for example, only optimize where the camera can see. So you get to, for example, save up a little bit of VRAM and RAM while this is true. But in our case, we need shadows and reflections as we have glass, obviously. So we're using GeoScatter add-on as well in order to scatter. Go ahead and choose a very low density and scatter your own popless tree. Go ahead to the color max, masks, choose your group and invert it. Let's go to the rotation, choose the global Z in the align and enable the random rotation with the tail set tool. Random scale set to 0 0.8, 0 0.9, whatever looks best in your case. And voila, it looks quite moody already. Very interesting. You could go ahead and, for example, play with the amount density. In my case, I kept it at 0 0.1 or 0 0.15. However, it still lacks a bit more shadows, as you could see in front of you. Which is something we need to fix, since my main focus was having some very, very nice uh, type of global look, right? I want most of the foreground to be hidden, which is why I'm going to add a simple tree from the Botanic. You can use whatever tree. The quality doesn't matter at all. I mean, uh, for, for the sake of shadows, you can just literally just use a plane with a noise section, which we're going to do in a minute. I want the foreground to be relatively dark with a little bit of light coming from the sun through the twigs. And as you can see, we're adding a different plane, giving it a 
type of uh, muddy material without texture even which I'm going to sample from our own material but to make it a bit darker as well I'll scatter the same tree on it why because it will play the role of a backdrop make sure to apply the scale for it to render correctly now that way we don't see any type of horizon as you can see in front of you now it's time to add our grass for the grass go ahead and just choose do a density scatter and let's take a look at our grass now for the sake of optimization we need to do a couple of things mostly go to the visibility section and display as it will show you a proxy enable camera optimization with some uh, field of view boost which will help us get a fuller grass on the borders of the camera now as you could see we have a small issue the grass transparency is not working as intended we have these very dark and black type of halo which can be fixed by for example going ahead to the light path in a minute as you can see we have the problem in light paths which is why we're going to the light paths section and up in the transparency to 512 light rays It doesn't add up time so don't worry about it play with the distribution and the amount of instances and density as you can see it looks interesting but now we want to art direct this a bit mostly on the light the scene is extremely simple it's not realistic but we want it to look as interesting as possible so let's add a shadow cache plane let's keep it white in this case i don't want it to be very dark if i want it to be dark we would turn the base color into black and just position it where it makes sense and slightly obscure the side of the house add a noise texture plug it into the opacity and plug a color wrap in order to crunch the contrast up Now at this point, just go ahead and play with the values in the noise. Let's make it 4D and just play with the scale and the W. As you can see, other you spend as much time as you want. Explore what this gives you. It's like literally just free details and nice uh, shadows for free. After that, we need to add some type of fog. Not very uh, powerful and very, we want it very subtle to add that, that little bit of gloom effect and type of dreamy render, which is what I'm going for in this case. So, at the principal base, they have set the color to pure white 255, the anisotropy to 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and the density to something that makes sense now you can't predict how this will look for most of the case right? especially if it's in an environment and not a regular light so also add to boost the effect some transmission and sample the color of the transmission from the color of the sky which gives it a super nice bluish tint that fits and gives a nice transition between the trees in the front and the trees in the back now after having that what we can go ahead and do for instance we want to have a nice sun background we want to have some clouds which is why i'm going to add a hdri from polyhaven this is the hdr sunflowers pure sky go ahead and plug it into the surface in our world tab and add a background add until it makes sense add a mapping coordinate by pressing ctrl t while having the wrangler add-on set up 
and play with the rotation until it makes sense and looks good. In this case, I'm trying to have some nice clouds in the background, but I want this to look slightly more blue and relatively more color uh, contrasty, I can say. So let's add some saturation, 1.2. But we want to keep our main lighting. So what can we do? Well, we can go ahead and add a mix shader here. Plug the second background node that has our environment and add a light path. And plug the in camera ray as our mix factor, which will use our uh, sky and sun node as our main lighting and for the override, Visibility we're going to be using our own HDRI. Now, as you can see, we've got a super nice image within 30 or 40 minutes. That's what it, 30 minutes, specifically 29 minutes, exactly. And at this point, you want to go ahead and make sure that your colors are correct. So let's use AGX. Looks really well in this case. Let's play with the look. We've got a couple of looks here. I used punch in this case and up the exposure a bit until it looks okay. You can take it to Photoshop. You can take it to Affinity Photo. Add some blue in the compositing and just all around play with the image. Add details, maybe add rocks, add people, add animals, add light rays, whatever you want to go ahead and add. So this is the end of our video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe. Message me on Discord or Instagram if you found it useful and have any questions and until next time take care and enjoy